All right, guys, so we're gonna do something a little different today from what we've been doing. Um, so last, last time we learned about evolution and now we're gonna start learning about animals of the world and we're gonna think about them in terms of evolution, in terms of where they came from, in terms of other animals, the other animals they're related to and the special ways in which they adapted to their environment. Do you remember what adaptation means? Do you guys remember from the evolution talk what adaptation means? Adaptation means um, to like change. Right. So adaptation like the means that you are ch that the animal is changing. The animal doesn't change itself. The animal is changed by something called natural selection which means that when the animal's babies, all the animal's babies are different in little tiny ways. And the babies that are slightly better suited, um, better adapted for their environment, which makes them more likely to survive, they're the ones that will go on to have their own babies and they will pass on those variations that are better adapted to their environment. And we're gonna try and think about these animals in the way that they're adapted. So what uh, what animal are we gonna start with? What animal are we gonna hippo. do first? Hippo. Right? The full name of a hippo is a hippopotamus. And hippopotamus comes from ancient Greek. And what it means is river horse. That's what the Greeks called hippopotamuses, river horses. Hippo is the Greek word, oh, ancient Greek word for horse. And potamus is the is the ancient Greek word for river. So basically horse of the river. And we know that hippos are not horses and they're not closely related to horses, but the ancient Greeks, that's, that's what they called them. So hippopotamus uh, and a lot of animals in Africa, Asia, North America, you know, they came from other large animals that are now gone. You know what it means when an entire species of animal is gone from the it earth? It means extinct. Extinct, right? So those animals are now extinct. Now the specific kind of animals that hippopotamus are, well, we know they're animals, okay? The what? next large division of animals is animals with a spine. Those are called vertebrates. So they belong to vertebrates. And then the next major group of animals that they belong to is called mammals. Mammals are animals, that. for the most part, they have live babies and what else? And um, they feed them milk. They feed them milk, okay? They're warm-blooded animals. In general, almost all of them, they have live babies. They feed their babies milk. Within the group of mammals, um, hippos belong to a, um, an order of animals that are called ungulates. Ungulates basically means that they have hooves. Now, it doesn't mean they still have hooves, but they're descended from animals that started having hooves. Like horses? Well, horses have hooves, but hippos are not descended from horses. Animals with hooves made a major branch hundreds of millions of years ago to what's called the even-toed and the odd-toed hoof, hoofed animals. Uh, animals, which basically means how many toes they use to bear weights. So the even toed use two toes, the odd toed use one toe, um, and so the hippos belong to the even toed group, even toed ungulates, and the full family name is called artiodactyl or sometimes set artiodactyls. So we're going to watch a video about the big animals. Uh, that are now extinct that, um, you know, today's large animals and hippos originally descended from. Look at that, that's a pig's great, great, great grandfather, seven feet tall. Can you see bigger than us? Oh yeah. <clears throat> That's a sloth. That's what a sloth came from. 
Can you imagine if you ran outside and there were a couple of those outside? Nice doggy, nice doggy. That's a rhino. They were as big as dinosaurs, but they were mammals. Ah. Yep. Look at those tusks. And look at those horns under their butt, under their mouth. Under their those butt. are the two largest land mammals. Remember, dinosaurs were not mammals, so dinosaurs were still bigger, a lot of dinosaurs. We only know about these from fossils. They were gone before any humans came. Remember that the, the family of animals that hippos come from is called the artiodactyls or the set artiodactyls, also known as the even-toed ungulates. So the first group to split off of that family um, was the camels. So hundreds of million years ago, the camels went off in their own direction. And we'll talk about camels later. The next group to split off was the pigs. The next group to uh, split off was what's called the ruminants, which are animals that digest cellulose, digest leaves inside it, their stomachs. And that's, that's deer, cows, deers, yeah. sheep, and goats. Right, so all those animals are ruminants and they're closely related to each other. The last group that split off before hippopotamuses, which makes them hippopotamuses' closest cousin, you will never guess. So what is hippopotamuses' closest relative, living relative in this world? Is it still living or no? It's still living. The closest animals, living animals to hippopotamus in the world. Monkeys? No, nope. monkeys are very, very distant relatives. Monkeys are primates. They're not related to the ungulates closely. Um, what? Any guess? Do you want to make one guess? Rhinos? One is, nope. Rhinos are actually odd-toed ungulates. They are perissodactyls. Crocodiles? So they are, no, crocodiles are reptiles. They're very far away. So the closest living animals, living relatives to hippos are whales. Whales, porpoises, and dolphins, because whales, porpoises, and dolphins, remember, are not fish, are nowhere near related to fish, and are actually descended from mammals that used to walk, but adapted and lost their legs completely and returned to the ocean. So that is just an important reminder that blue whales are not at all related or any kind of whale, porpoise, dolphin, completely unrelated to fish and are more closely related to land animals and actually hippos are the closest relatives. Um, so uh, I just saw this other video actually that I missed before coming up about artiodactyls and it's called When Whales Walked. So maybe this will give us some more information about uh, where, um, you know, how hippos and whales are related and where they came from. We know whales as graceful giants. Some are powerful hunters, some are gentle filter feeders, but no matter what they eat or how they live, whales as we know them are bound to the sea. But there was actually a time when whales could walk. The tale of whale evolution is a story about one of the most remarkable transitions in the history of mammals. The fossil record shows how these animals transform from tiny four-legged plant eaters no bigger than house cats to the seafaring giants we know today. This change was dramatic and kind of fast. Fossils from over the past 50 million years have revealed whale-like animals of all shapes and sizes, each like a piece in the puzzle of whale evolution. Smack in the middle of this amazing transformation is Ambulocetus, a toothy predator the size of a sea lion and a striking example of a mammal order in transition. Ambulocetus lived about 48 million years ago in what is now northern India and Pakistan, and its full name, Ambulocetus natans, literally means the walking, swimming whale. But scientists will tell you that it wasn't really great at 
either. In the water, it was a powerful swimmer, but not very fast or efficient. On land, it was clumsy too, with legs that splayed out to the sides, a belly that almost dragged on the ground, and a snout that was so long and heavy, it looked like it could barely lift its head. But Ambulocetus was perfectly equipped for its environment. It lived in partially freshwater environments like river deltas, where it lurked in the shallows and grabbed whatever prey that came near its giant snout. The group of mammals that includes whales and dolphins, known as cetaceans, are so different from other living mammals that it's been hard to figure out what exactly they evolved from. Interestingly, research done in both the field and in the lab revealed some surprises. First, in the 1980s and 90s, a set of genetic studies took sequences of DNA from whales and compared them to the same sequences in other living animals. And these comparisons showed that the cetaceans are actually most closely related to a group known as artiodactyls, hoofed mammals that includes hippos, pigs, and deer. Then a number of fossils found a little later seem to support the same conclusion. In 2007, paleontologists in Kashmir, India found the fossils of a 47 million year old hoofed creature the size of a house cat that they named Indohyus. It turned out that this tiny mammal had a specialized thickened ear bone that until this discovery had only been found in whales. The bone, called an involucrum, helps aquatic mammals here underwater, and it shows up even in the earliest cetaceans. It also had other adaptations for life in the water, like really dense leg bones, a trait that helps keep mammals like hippos weighted down when they're walking through a river. But Indohyus wasn't a cetacean. It had four legs and hooves for crying out loud. It even had a special ankle bone called an astragalus, shaped kind of like a pulley. And that feature is only found in artiodactyls. Some very early cetaceans have this ankle bone too, which tells us that cetaceans evolved from artiodactyls. So Indohyus is now largely considered the closest non-cetacean relative of whales. Unlike Ambulocetus, it's not a member of the immediate whale family, but it shares a common ancestor with them, helping to connect today's artiodactyls. In other words, if Ambulocetus represents the transition from land to water, then Indohyus represents the transition from artiodactyls to whales. By the time the first recognizable whales like Basilosaurus show up in the fossil record about 40 million years ago, this group of mammals would never come out of the water again. Again. But there's still a question of why? Why would a cute little deer thing end up leading a whole order of mammals to life in the deep sea? That's a question that remains unanswered. Maybe there were fewer predators in the sea than on land 50 million years ago. Or maybe there was more food in the ocean and less competition for it. After all, from Indohyus to Ambulocetus, there are many adaptations that show us that the diet of these animals changed from land-based sources to aquatic prey. Remember that when we want to figure out how living animals are related, we have to be like a detective. And we have two major kinds of, of information now that we use to determine how animals are related. First, we have fossils. Fossils are really important because <clears throat> just looking at their bones, we can see things that are similar in bones between one animal and another animal. So even though <clears throat> they may look completely different today, like those little, um, those little deer-like animal and whales. Just by picking up on specific kinds of new bones that they had, we can see that they had to be related. We can look past these kind of changes with regards to their size or whether or not they have legs, because these things can change with evolution. And we can go back and we can see for sure what didn't change with evolution, that means they had to be related. The other major tool we have that's only for living animals is the DNA, the book of instructions. We can look in the book of instructions between a hippo and a whale, and we can see that even though there's a lot of big things which are different, obviously, hippos have legs, whales don't, there are important areas which are exactly the same things that don't really affect the way that the animal looks, but prove that the instructions of the whale started with the instructions of the hippo. We don't have those books of instructions for animals that are extinct because we cannot get DNA from most fossils. They may eventually be able to do it, which will be great, but right now with fossils, it's like, a uh, toy where the instructions are gone. So we just have to look at the bones and figure out what's going on. But living animals, we have the instructions and that 
is a valuable tool for determining how animals are related. So let's talk, we came to talk about hippos. We know where they came from. Uh, we know that they're artiodactyls and they're in the same family, distant relatives are camels, pigs, cows, deer, and of course, whales are their closest relatives. But what is special about hippos? Well, hippos are the third largest land animal right now. What is the largest land animal? Do you know? The whale. The land animal. Oh. What is the largest animal that walks on Earth? I mean, um, a crocodile? A crocodile is not the largest animal on Earth, the largest An land animal. An elephant is the largest land animal. And number two is the rhinoceros. But some hippos are larger than some rhinoceroses. But in general, the, there's a type of rhinoceros that's generally larger than a hippo, but it's pretty close. So hippos, hippos are big. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things about hippopotamus that makes them special. Looking at a hippopotamus, does it look fast or slow? slow. It looks slow, right? But it looks Fat like it and can slow. Go fast but in the water. It can go fast in the water, but it can also run fast on land. It can run much faster than a human on land. It can't do it for very long, but on land it can run up to 20 miles an hour for short distances, which is faster than a human can run. It's about as fast as a human going on his bike. Not racing, but regularly riding on his bike. It's about how fast a hippo can run for short distances. They live in water, they spend almost all their time in water, but they're not very good swimmers. They tend to live in shallow water and they can run on the bottom of the water. They can hold their breath. They don't have to breathe for a long time, sometimes up to five minutes, and they even sleep underwater and they can rise just enough to the surface to breathe every few minutes without even waking up. Um, now think about the evolution of a hippo and look at a hippo. Where does a hippo breathe through? It breathes through its nose. Is a hippo's nose in front or on top? A hippo's nostrils right. are on top, on top of its head. Yeah. If you look closely at a hippo, the nostrils are up here so that the hippo doesn't have to stick his head out of the water to breathe. It just has to let the very top of its head go to the surface of the water and then it breathes through its nostrils. So that is an adaptation that allowed the hippo, unlike other ungulates, unlike other hoofed animals, the hippo is the only one that became able to occupy that niche of the swamp where it can basically live almost all its time underwater and avoid predators, avoid people who want to eat it. And that is where that place was for a hippo to go. And that's why it evolved that way. And it stayed that way for hundreds of millions of years because it was a good strategy. Um, it has those long teeth, right? It has its actual teeth that it eats with the molars are in the back and it chews plants with those. The teeth that it uses in front are now used only for fighting. They're called incisors and canines. They're like huge stabbing tools and they really use them for defending themselves against other animals like big crocodiles and they also use them for fighting each other, which they do a lot. The incisors, those big teeth, they actually sharpen themselves by rubbing against each other. Um, the skin of a hippopotamus actually secretes its own sunscreen. So they make their own sunscreen from glands. It's like a red clay substance that comes out onto the skin. If you touched a hippo, your hand would come back covered with like a red goop that hippos make that blocks out the harmful rays of the sun. Um, it's not. It's not, it's they secrete their own stuff from their own glands. It's like a sunscreen. Do they uh, eat meat? So hippos eat plants, they're herbivores. 
Their mouths are adapted to open very, very wide. They have a special fold in the corner of their mouth that allows their mouths to open almost straight, 180 degrees, and they get big, big quantities of river grass that way. Now they can eat meat, but their stomachs are not adapted to eat meat. They've sometimes been seen to eat like dead animals in the river, but that's not considered to be normal behavior. It's only when there's not enough food around or there's something wrong with the hippo, but in general, they are not meat eaters. Um, they live to be up to 50 years old in the wild. So that's pretty long for, uh, for a mammal. And the other thing that I know uh, you guys would be excited to know they mark their territory with their poop. So you know how dogs mark their territory by peeing on trees and stuff? So other animals can smell? Well, like hippos, lions. hippos do it with poop. <laughs> and if you ever go to the zoo and you're lucky, you can see a hippo pooping. What they do is they poop against a wall or against a rock and then they spin their tail and it splatters their poop really far in every direction. They do that to mark more territory. And if you're not lucky and you're in the zoo and you're standing too close and the hippo's spinning his toe particularly well, you may get sprayed with hippo poop. So remember <laughs> that and don't ever get too close to a hippo when he's pooping. Um, hippos are not friendly animals. They're very aggressive and they're very dangerous. And they are actually responsible for more deaths of people in Africa than any other, uh, any other animal. Um, and, you know, that would be like crocodiles, lions, you would think they would kill more people, but it's actually hippos. They're the most dangerous large animal in Africa. Aren't there like snakes, don't they? No, no, hippos kill more people than any particular snake in that Africa. Means spiders? Well, spiders, you know, insects and stuff, I'm not sure they're included in that category. The most dangerous animal, if you include all animals in the world, is actually a mosquito. Because yes. mosquitoes carry malaria. malaria, which kills many more people than any other animal put together. So mosquitoes are by far the most dangerous animal in the world to humans, but it's not really the same thing as getting eaten or killed directly by an animal. So hippos are found all through sub-Saharan Africa, but they're scattered around. They're not everywhere. They're only around lakes and rivers, places that have fresh water. And every year their habitat, the place where they live gets smaller and smaller because humans build next to them. Humans um, take away the fresh water with dams and other things that mess up their habitats. And humans directly kill hippos, a lot of the times for their tusks, which are made out of ivory, just like elephants. So hippos are at risk from humans of eventually going extinct. So it's very important to protect, uh, protect the hippos. Um, adult hippos are not vulnerable to other animals. There's almost no other animal that can kill an adult hippo. Sometimes a whole pack of lions, if they're able to catch a hippo on land, an adult can kill it. Sometimes um, more than one crocodile can kill an adult hippo, usually if they are already very old or sick. Baby hippos can be killed by crocodiles and uh, certainly by lions if they're on land. That's why adult hippos, mothers, will usually protect their young until they're big enough to be safe. And adult hippos will actually kill other animals, especially crocodiles. Although normally they live side by side without bothering each other, large groups of hippos will sometimes kill a crocodile and they can do that with their large, large tusks. This is um, hippos that are fighting each other and usually fighting each other means they're fighting over a girl, just like people.
the intimidation begins. When neither backs down, there can only be one outcome. Fights can go on for hours and can be to the death. Forward-pointing tusks can stab right through protected blubber. Savage bite to the head brings the contest to an end. So they will attack animals that are dangerous to them or their babies like crocodiles, but they will also attack animals that get into their territory that are completely not dangerous to them, like zebras and impalas, which are a kind of deer. He's got it. He did it. <laughs> Look at that. Watch the last uh, video over here, hippos attacking boats. Remember what I said about hippos being very dangerous to humans. Even when you're in a boat, you're not safe from hippos. <laughs> oh, that's a bit... <laughs> Who's coming for us? Holy sh**! <laughs> oh my god! The problem is if you are okay in the middle of the hippo and the water, you know. Yeah. Once you between the hippo and the water, yeah. oh, that's yeah. crazy. So. Well, well. Hello. Oh. 
So those people were actually riding in a boat in Africa and they were just happened to be talking about a hippo attack where someone was actually killed. And just by coincidence, while they were talking about a hippo attack, a hippo jumped out of the water and I maybe crashed into their boat and somebody fell out of their boat, but they were able to get him back in. The hippo wow. didn't bite him. So, um, a man or a girl? A man. So you can see, you can see now that hippos are not really our, our kind of dangerous uh, animals. Oh, there's one other thing that I wanted to tell you about hippos, which is that hippos habitat is in Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, but there's actually one small population of hippos that lives in the wild outside of Africa, and they are in South America in Colombia. And the reason the hippos are there is that there was a criminal who lived in Colombia who got very, very, very rich, and he decided he wanted to have a zoo, and he actually bought some hippos and put some hippos on his land in Colombia, in South America. When he was killed and his uh, zoo, basically, no one was taking care of it, the hippos escaped the zoo, and now they live in an area around the river there in Colombia, and they have not gotten rid of the hippos. So as far as I know, that's the only population of hippos that lives up in the wild outside of Africa. And interestingly enough, in the United States, about a hundred years ago, somebody wanted to bring hippos into the Missis into into Louisiana, around the branches of the Mississippi River, where it comes into the Gulf of Mexico. There were some other animals that they hoped that the hippos would get rid of, or something. And they tried to pass a law to get the hippos into Louisiana and that law almost passed, but it didn't. So they never brought the hippos into Louisiana. But if that law had passed after a hundred years, we might think of Louisiana as a place where you can go, not just to see um, alligators, but you can also see hippos in the swamps in Louisiana. But unfortunately that never happened. So anyway, that's it for hippopotamus. What I want you guys to remember about hippopotamus, right? Is that their relatives, they're basically in kind of like the deer family, the hoofed animal family. They're related to cl most closely to whales, but also to cows, deer, sheep, pigs, farm Not animals, um, camel, camels, but they are not closely related to uh, horses. horses. They're not closely related to elephants or rhinoceroses. Uh, so th that's kind of interesting. And then all the special adaptations that they have for their unique environment underwater in Africa, in rivers, shallow rivers and lakes with their mouths that can open very wide to eat a lot of grass and uh, their nostrils and eyes at the very top of their head so that they can surface uh, with only a little bit of their body showing so other animals can't even see that they're there. And um, their, their sunscreen that they make, their long teeth for fighting with each other and other animals, they hold their breath a long time. So these are all very special, unique things about hippos. And hippos are important for the environment as well. Remember how much they eat and how much grass they, meet? they eat? They make a lot of poop. And the poop that they make supports a lot of smaller animals small fish and animals that are too small for you even to see that live in the rivers. And if there were no hippos and no hippo poop, those animals would die. The animals that eat those little fish would die. So just getting rid of hippos could disrupt the existence of a whole other groups of animals. So that's why it's very important not to make animals extinct through the actions of humans because what we call the downstream effects could be very harmful uh, to the environment, to the planet, and are very difficult to predict, right? Wait, the little fish need to eat the hippo's poop? That's right. Or they starve because they can't eat the plants. They have to wait until the hippos eat the plants and poop them out, and then they can eat what the hippos poop out. That's all 
for Hippopotamus. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.